everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a Let's Play review of Ghost and Goblins Resurrection for the Nintendo Switch. Now if you're unaware, this just released on February 25th of 2021 and it's being sold right now on the eShop for $29.99. As of right now, there's still no plans for a physical release of the game. However, although it might be a little bit of a spoiler to where the review is heading, I am hoping that they do come out with a physical version of this game because this is definitely one that I would like to add to my physical collection. Now, if this is your first time watching these videos, basically, I've already played through the whole game, so I already know what my talking points are about the video, but I find that the best way to talk about the game is while we're playing it. Now, I am a bit worried because Ghosts and Goblins, spoilers, is a very difficult game. So it might be a little bit hard to talk and play at the same time, but we'll do our best to work through it. And anyway, the most important parts are the talking points of the review. The gameplay is more there to just to give you guys something to look at as we go through the game. Now, the last thing before we get started, if any of you are unaware about what the Ghosts and Goblins series is because you don't know its history, this is a series that dates all the way back to the NES and even the Capcom arcade machines even before that. And that is part of why this series is known to be so difficult. It was originally built to be a quarter muncher for arcades, meaning that they wanted you to keep popping in those quarters in the machines, so they had to make the game extremely difficult to make sure that people would have a hard time finishing it and have to dump in a bunch of quarters to do so. Perfect. So just before we start, we're going to talk really quickly about the different difficulty levels. First of all, what you need to know is that basically the four difficulty levels, what's really fun is that although uh, Ghosts and Goblins is a very difficult game, they've done some pretty modern adaptations to it. Meaning that by putting in these four levels, you can either experience a diehard game like the original one if you want to play anything Squire and above. If you just want to experience the game, have fun and make sure you can make it to the end pretty quickly, you can play on page. The only thing that I would recommend is I would strongly recommend most people, unless you're really new to 2D platformers, to start at least at Squire. Because the problem with Page is that it really doesn't prepare you for any of the harder difficulties. The difficulty level is toned down so much that it really doesn't give you a feeling of what the end game is going to be at the harder levels. I really recommend that if you're new to the series, start on Squire. I played my two playthroughs on Squire so far just because I wanted a difficulty level that I would be sure to be able to knock out in one day because I basically had one day to get this review ready. Okay, And I managed to play through Squire and all the shadow levels in the same day. Uh, most people though I would say will still have a fair bit of difficulty because I had to try a lot of sections many multiple times to be able to actually finish it even though I did it in one day. And the advantage is that Squire prepares you after that to challenge yourself with Knight and Legend. Like basically on my own time, I am definitely going to be going to be jumping straight to Legend and working my way to do a full playthrough at this level to really experience the full enjoyment of this game. But at Squire, you'll have an awesome time and you probably won't get as frustrated than if you try to start at Knight or Legend. A lot of people, if they're not ready for it, might actually quit the game of just because of how frustrating Knight and Legend can become. I tried starting a game and it is quite a bit difficult. Today we'll be playing on page, okay? But this is just for the review process. This is just so I can play through the game while I'm talking to all of you. Because the advantage of page is that if you die, you have unlimited lives and you start exactly where you die. So we'll be it's guaranteed that we'll be able to progress through the stages and I'll be able to get to everything I want to show you in the sort of 15 to 20 minute window that I normally would want for a review. So now that we've gone through the difficulty, let's take a look at the gameplay. And uh, last thing, you can actually play the game in, in co-op mode where the second player controls a ghost character that can actually help the player over obstacles and uh, basically kill enemies for them. It makes the game also a lot easier. So if you have someone laying around and you want to have some real fun, 
two-player option is pretty decent. Now, what is also new to the series here is that you actually have a choice of branching paths. The first two stages, you'll have the choice between two stages to work through, and it'll give you an experience of a different playthrough. And you can actually play both stages if you want to, because as you can see, when you choose a stage, it there's a little uh, indicator at the bottom. As you can see, there's a little sort of B icon. It's that if the more bees you collect, it's actually your progression system in the game. You actually have a way to upgrade your abilities here. And to do that, you have to collect the bees in the different stages. So if you're having trouble progressing, you can either you can actually play the second stage of the same level to collect more bees and help you progress in the further stages. But if not, theoretically, if you want to make it to the end of the game, you only have to finish one of the first two stages. And then in the second branch, once again, you'll have the choice of two different stages. The last three stages are common to every playthrough, so it won't change at all. Let's start with the graveyard. That is the one I am most familiar with. So we are going to play through that stage today. Now, really quickly, the controls in the game are uber simple. Okay, they are, it's a traditional 2D uh, platformer. So there aren't the controls aren't difficult at all. Basically, I am playing today on my uh, PDP little wireless controller, which I'm getting the review ready for, which is why I'm playing with this exclusively for the moment. But basically, I'm using my D-pad to move around. You can use the joystick. It's not an issue. And basically, you only have two uh, action buttons. Theoretically, you have the B button to jump. And the double jump from the Super NES version of Ghouls and Ghosts is gone. So it is only a single jump. And you have the Y button to attack. You can also attack upwards. And if you jump, you can actually attack directly below you. Later on in that upgrade three tree that I showed you earlier, you can actually unlock some magic spells that you will hold down the attack button to be able to charge up. You can also flip your magic spells with the R and L buttons at the top. So once you get multiple magic spells, you'll be able to cycle through them. And lastly, if you choose one peculiar path on the tree, you can actually stock a second weapon that you can use with the A button. Um, but that's pretty much it for the basic gameplay. So let's start moving on throughout the stage. Now, you see this these little flags here? If you're playing on any other mode other than page, these will be your continue, your checkpoints. And basically, the harder the difficulty level, the less checkpoints there will be. Meaning that at the legend difficulty, that is probably the hardest part, is that you have to finish almost half the whole stage before you even hit a checkpoint. While the other difficulty modes, you'll pretty have you'll have a checkpoint pretty much every, I would say, quarter stage. Now, um, as you can see, I got hit because I'm talking to all of you, but basically we just got a weapon drop there. So you also will have various weapons that you get to choose from. They're generally the best weapons. The knife is among the best. And this is the first upgrade B here, the umbral, um, umbral B that they call them. So when you see one of those, your priority is to get those Bs. The reason why is because if you catch it, even if you die and you start from the last checkpoint, You'll already have the B, meaning that you won't have to throw yourself at it the next time. So whenever you see a B, you want to you want to get it as fast as possible, even if it costs you a life, simply because you'll be able to keep it and you actually can upgrade right in the middle of a stage. And we'll look at that a little later. As soon as I have three Bs collected, we'll be purchasing an upgrade. And basically, uh, I'll show you guys, we'll see exactly how that works. Now, I shouldn't have gotten that lance there. That was a mistake because basically the knife is pretty much the best weapon in the game. And that is the one that theoretically I would have wanted to keep. Now I got turned into a frog, so we just have to wait till it goes out. Also on this mode, it's sort of like an easy mode. As I said, you have the least enemies in the game. All the other modes you'll see there are a ton more enemies than this, which is pretty much why my progression is going so smoothly at the moment. But even at that, I'm getting hit because I'm talking to all of you. But as I said, I chose the page mode because I knew that we'd be able to see exactly how this game plays out. Now, as I said, 
what I'll undoubtedly die at one point. The only big difference, however, is that in this version of the game, and here we got the golden armor, which is the top upgrade in the game. When you get this, all your attacks become more powerful. And if we would have magic, you would be able to charge your magic a lot quicker. But basically, let's keep moving on here and we'll see as much as we can about this game. What I am super happy as well, and I had talking like, if you follow my videos, you know that I was waiting for this game for a long time. Basically, it was in my top games of February. It was one of the top games I was looking forward to. However, originally, I thought it was only going to be a pure uh, redesign of the original game, of the original Go Ghouls and Ghosts. And I found that... Um, I said Ghouls and Ghosts. I mean Ghosts and Goblins. And the Ghosts and Goblins is basically... Um, I thought it was going to be just a pure visual remake of the original. And I found that $30 was quite steep. What I'm happy to let you all know is that this is not a remake of the original. This is a reimagining of the original. So even if you played the first game, all these stages are original. Some of the concepts are recycled, like you'll recognize some bosses, you'll recognize some locations, but none of the stages are recycled from the original game. They are all original stages with original obstacles and whatnot. So that I was super happy to see because I was worried that $30 for a pure visual upgrade to the original game would have felt steep. And now here we have one of the worst enemies in the game. Everyone hates these guys, the Red Devils. In this mode, they're not that bad, but in every other mode, these guys are like... You just want to make it to the next checkpoint so that if you die, he doesn't respawn. Because by the way, they don't respawn if... You make it to the next checkpoint and now we just are going to try to keep them at bay because they are extremely hard to dodge just fire and we will try to make sure that we get to that checkpoint and i knew that was going to happen so this is what's original to page mode is that basically we respawn exactly where we die any other mode of the game, I would have gone all the way back to the last flag, which means right at the beginning of the last section. But in this mode, it doesn't work that way. You respawn exactly, which is why I said that, unfortunately, in my opinion, this mode doesn't get you ready for the real game because this is a mechanic that only exists in page mode and it removes the main difficulty of the game, which is having to restart at the beginning of each section when you fail one. Um... Secondly, this game is all about memorization. So it rewards people who redo the same sections over and over again, learning the best way to get around the obstacles. So these guys, it's all about just dodging. So here we go. And basically, one thing, which is once again why I am strongly advocating for starting on Squire, because you'll get to play through the same parts of the stage over and over again. By the way, that's why i'm having such an easy time because as i said i've already finished the game twice so i do know most of these obstacles now by heart because when i finished them on squire i pretty much did every section of the game at least i would say five times or more to actually make it through each section and i'll be honest some sections i had to play through at least 20 times so this is a difficult game even at the squire difficulty uh, and honestly I love that they stayed honest to the true game like that. And look, I'm talking to all of you and I'm doing really badly. But as I was saying, I'm really glad that they stayed honest to the true concept of the game. But at the same time, giving it a modern, um, you know, a modern feeling by giving the options for the people that don't want a extremely difficult and frustrating game to not feel like they just wasted $30. Because basically, I know a lot of people that bought the original uh, Ghosts and Goblins on the NES and basically just never finished the game because it was just too darn difficult. Well, with this game, the good news is it will not happen because basically, if you are having an extreme difficult time and you just want to experience the storyline, see the beautiful designs in the levels and whatnot, well, feel free to jump down to page mode or squire and you'll be able to finish the game with just a minimal bit of effort and 
honestly, as we start talking about the sort of critiques of the game, number one, the visual style in the game that they chose is beautiful. If you don't know, this is actually the RE engine, which uh, basically rolls uh, Resident Evil 7 and all that. And this is the first time it's ever used on the Switch. And I've got to say, it's actually the first time to my knowledge. I'm, sh I'm sure I'm wrong on this because I'm sure there must be some other game. But this is the first time I see it used in 2D. And I've got to say that the engine works perfectly. And it really emulates the feeling of the original game. And that's something that I really want to specify about this game that makes it so awesome. Is that I've never or very rarely played a reimagining of a game that feels so honest to the source game. Like basically this really feels like I'm playing what Ghosts and... Uh, I'm gonna sorry because i'm i have the super nes version in my head in my head so i keep saying um ghouls and ghosts but ghosts and goblins is where i want to go but anyway i i really it, it's really rare that you feel a game and you feel like this is what they pretty pretty much would have wanted to make had the original game come out today so we got that umbral b and now this is where we're going to take a look at the upgrade system. So what is awesome, and this is not only true about this mode, you can actually do this in pretty much all the versions of the game, but when you die, you can actually go back to the map. So if you go back to the map, it'll save your progress to the last, basically, uh, checkpoint that you got to. So at this point in the game, let's say you're having difficulty, you just got your third B, you want to look at what upgrades you can get. You can actually just return to the map. You can go to your upgrade section here and say, hmm, what would I like? Let's go get the thunderstorm. The thunderstorm only costs one B. Why not, why not pick it up? So we're going to grab the thunderstorm. We've got our upgrade. We can look if there's any other ones that we can maybe purchase. Now the next one would cost three, so we need an extra B. You come back to the graveyard. And we're back at the last check. We're in a few seconds. We'll be back right at the last checkpoint of the game. And that is something that is really, really awesome. The reason why is that you can actually restart. So we're back a little bit because we're back at the last checkpoint, as I said. But in the normal game, don't forget that checkpoints are your normal continue spots. It's only in this game where when you die, you actually start a little bit, you know, exactly where you died off in the original version. Now, we do not want that. So sometimes this game is also about skipping upgrades. Because honestly, the projectiles are way stronger in this game than all the other versions. And very rarely. And that is another thing that I love that they did. Is that upgrade system. Sorry getting back to it. Is that you can actually swap at a boss. If you're having trouble with a boss. And you think that a peculiar. A, a particular upgrade might help you out. You can actually swap. Right at the boss. Because even at the hardest difficulty levels. The bosses will always have a checkpoint. Right before the, begin, they're at the beginning of the fight. So that is another really awesome modern take that they did on the game to make sure that even at the hardest levels you don't get frustrated to the point where you have to play through half the stage just to try the boss again which is a really really good thing that they did so honestly i mean we're gonna keep playing for a bit but this game really is amazing i really am super happy and now that $30 price point is feeling a lot better than it was when they announced the game. I really thought that I was going to be disappointed. Well, I thought I was going to like the game, but be disappointed by the price point. But I've got to tell you all, completely opposite. I am super happy with the price point. I would always love things to be cheaper. Like, don't get me wrong. Cheaper is always better. But at the same time, for a completely reimagining and a complete game like this... We're actually lucky Capcom didn't release it for more expensive. I'm really glad they didn't, but as we all know, Capcom sometimes does some crazy, you know, some crazy pricing mechanics, but I'm really glad that in case, this case they didn't, and they released it actually at a pretty fair price. 
let's charge up our magic here use our lightning i thought it would hit the plant but apparently they are immune to it but but basically we'll get some enemies that get it as you can see i held down the attack button a few seconds and it unlocked unleashes your magic attack actually i've been paying attention there let's just uh, okay, let's spawn at the top and slide back down there we go and that was not what was planned so give me a second here we just gotta concentrate get to that side there we go let's see if anything good in there just a normal thing and we're about to get to the first boss, so we are going to uh, f beat him, and then we are pretty much going to be ending, I think, the video there. Because I think we said pretty much what we need to see about this game. It is an amazing, amazing 2D side-scroller, and if you want an extremely challenging game, this is a great game to start out with. So, basically, we are going to... This guy, basically, it's all about learning the patterns. He's going to try and hit. Now, I know you can actually hit him. Let's start over. We were... Oh, we can actually continue during the boss, which is basically means that this is going to be easy as heck. So basically, this boss is all about just keeping moving. As soon as he jumps, you move. And I'm doing actually a pretty awful job at him right now. But as I said, talking to you guys while trying to play is quite difficult. And this is not an easy game. It is at this difficulty level. Like I said, this difficulty level is really made for just someone that wants to have some fun play through the game really easily because as you can see you die you start right back where you're from all of the frustration is gone from the game so we are going to stop the playthrough pretty much there i think you get the gist of how the game plays out now i think i've been praising the game pretty much the whole time however you know i just want to let you all know that there are maybe a few things that I would have changed about the game. We didn't see it in this playthrough, but you do get to certain sections of the game, especially at the harder difficulty levels, that do feel like they drag on at one point to just a punishing level. Like we're not we we didn't see it in this review, and especially if you're playing in the page mode, you're not gonna feel that level of frustration. But trust me, even at my squire playthrough. I'm thinking of one particular flying uh, like stone dragon section where at one point it just seemed like it dragged on a little too long. Um, but I'm glad to say that that is the exception. I can only think of like two or three sections maybe that it just felt unfair and like it dragged on too long and it, it just felt mean from the developers. But other than that, the rest of the game, what I really like this time compared to, let's say, the original game on the NES, is that although the game remains extremely difficult, it feels much more fair than the NES version because the kit that you have to work with is better adapted for the situations. As I said, number one, you can fire in multiple directions and the way you move your character is much more responsive than in the NES version. So the controls are tighter, although they stay with that sort of floaty jump feeling. But nonetheless, they respond a lot quicker, especially for the change of directions. So the game feels just fairer than it did on the NES. And the difficulty doesn't come from the lack of control, but rather really comes from the obstacles in the stages. And the stages are designed in a beautiful fashion. So... We're pretty much at the verdict for this game at this point. Now, um, if this is the first video of mine that you ever watch, I don't give a numerical score. I give a general statement that is my suggestion on whether you should purchase the game or not. 
and in my opinion, uh, this game is going to be getting a definite pickup. Um, the only thing keeping this from a hidden gem is right now the price point. If Capcom would have released this at like $20, because I'm comfortable with the price point, but it still doesn't feel like a steal. If Capcom would have released this like at 20 bucks, this would have been a hidden gem on the Switch. Okay, it would have been a top-notch game. But right now, it's at that definite pickup. And however, if you enjoy difficult gameplay, like this should be first on your list. It is, is, it is a game that, in my opinion, everyone who enjoys challenging platformers should definitely experience this game at least once. Um, once again, I really want to hear from all of you. If you're liking this version of, you know, reviewing game as we play through and just talking about it in general. So rather than that traditional review process, just going through a game, playing it and talking about everything, how the game's feeling, how the game's responding, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and hit the notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. But that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. Uh, and, you know, as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.